Buffalo are uh, central to who we are and to our identity. We have now recognized the bison as our national mammal. It's not only a Native American story, it's an, it's an American story that people need to understand. Bison is the historical keystone species in maintaining healthy grassland. This land needs large ungulates in order to be healthy and the most productive it can be. It's the way it's evolved. There's never a day that I come out and see these animals that I'm not awestruck. It's an animal that most Americans can identify and love. It's hard to not romanticize them. When you look at them, you get that primal feeling. I know I'm putting human emotions to an animal, but you can look in all their eyes and you know there's a bond. Well, I think like just about everybody else that gets involved with bison in any way, uh, you just fall in love with the animal. Uh, in order for us to be our full authentic selves, and then I think for the buffalo to, to be their fullest selves as buffalo, as Tratanka as we call it, uh, we have to have a relationship with them. The history is phenomenal. How they've survived for thousands of years. Surviving the last ice age, almost going extinct through hunting and disease and getting down to so few numbers and then expanding and getting to the point where it's a, not only a stable population, but it's a, it's a growing and healthy population. They're just survivors. I think that's what strikes me, and I think that probably what strikes almost anybody that's involved in bison ranching. And you think about what they represent to this landscape, to the people that lived here historically, to the ecosystem. When the buffalo were gone, we were unable to feed, clothe ourselves. The land and the environment suffered as well. I like to call grasslands North America's rainforest. These grasses are so efficient in capturing carbon and putting it back into the soil, but they can't do it by themselves. In the areas of the world where the rainfall and humidity is irregular, what grows, it can't decay. There's not the humidity above ground. If you think about where is the only place above ground year round in those areas where you have that moisture to decay, it's in the stomach or the ruminant of the animal. That's why we need the animal there. The forage has to go through the animal where the microbes are in the moist environment to decay. The grassland ecosystems evolved in concert with, with the bison. The amazing thing though is that when you put buffalo back on land, back into the, the ecosystem, they themselves begin to do ecological work. By restoration of a keystone species, we know that plant and animal biodiversity will increase. Buffalo lives in a way that we, we all should live. They're, they're incredibly kind animals. They take care of each other in, in ways that are just magnificent, in ways that are heartwarming, in ways that um, you know, represent, you know, kind of the best ideas that humanity strives for. Any storm that's coming, a buffalo will walk head into it and they weather it, and not only do they weather it, they actually thrive. That's a metaphor for life. The magnificence of this animal, each and every time you see it. There's just something about these animals that are so incredible. By bringing buffalo back, managing our other wildlife species, ensuring that we have uh, a viable population of buffalo is, is actually food sovereignty. Bison are prey animals. They've always helped sustain the wolves, the bears, the mountain lions, and the native peoples. We can trace our history back to this part of the world to at least 2,000 years. And, and during that time, we've relied on buffalo. 
that that's part of the relationship that we have with them. With the, the numbers of Buffalo being so diminished, um, it's now our turn to take care of the Buffalo. They took care of us and now it's our turn to take care of them. Consumers play actually an important role in, in the, the function of, um, of healthy bison herds. We want to be ecologically sustainable, but we have to be uh, economically sustainable as well. It's all part of the whole, if you will. Um, without the consumer, the chain is broken. Um, without the bison, the chain is broken for the healthy land. So the diet of getting this, this buffalo back into the, the dinner plates of our people is also about health and healing. And so as we heal the land by restoring buffalo, uh, we also in turn heal our communities. And what's great is we're all working together. We have different approaches as tribal producers or conservationists or ranchers. We have different approaches to maybe how we manage the animal. But at the heart of it is this magnificent animal that we all love and want to be good stewards of and we want to see restored to the ecosystems of North America.